Uh, yeah, hello everyone, as Marisa was saying, uh, mm -hmm. welcome to the update.com, uh, and I was, as Mark was saying as well, it's, yeah. it's very nice to see all developer faces here. Mm -hmm. uh, we are developers ourselves, so it's a, yeah. it's a pleasure to be here and share experiences with you. And um, yeah, I, I would like to ask like two more questions on top of the ones that Mark uh, said in the beginning, which is, out of all the developers that are here, how many have to deal with uh, Kubernetes or YAML or like Docker Compose or Docker Files every day? There you go. Every Raise your hands. Come on. Nice. You're in the right and, session. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the right session. Yeah, yeah. And how many of you consider YAML developers? I mean, we forgot the yeah. most popular language out there, right? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. So there many hands. YAML developers. There yeah, so just like, I mean, chill, enjoy the session. This, yeah. I, we want this to be like, like very friendly and open, so. Yeah. So let's, like, do you have any jokes? Do you want to start with any jokes? I mean, I don't have any jokes myself. I'm not a, like a joker, uh, pretty much. But uh, I do have some stories. Um, so we, we see this like beautiful picture of like Paris and like in a sunny day. But we are not coming from this like beautiful place. We actually had to go through some <laughs> nightmares yeah. to be here, you know. Uh, and it wasn't easy for us to actually get to this, to this state. I mean, Mauricio and myself, I, I agree, we have, we have around like 15 years in the industry. So we, we've seen it all. And we had to go through some pains some, in the process, you know. Yeah. Uh, so you know, you know what I like. And <laughs> if, and if you if you brought some kids, please don't lose them because you know otherwise some things, some bad things can happen. There you go. And uh, ultimately, uh, well, you know that Kubernetes was supposed to be the promised land, and then we <laughs> landed on the on these things. Yeah, but jokes aside, um, mm -hmm. the reason why uh, we are here is because uh, we've been through all <coughs> these like cloud-native movement, uh, we, I mean, it's like, we all agree that, it, that it's very useful and it allows us, us, allows us to like basically create complex, more complex and scalable applications, but the reality is that uh, we have been working on a Kubernetes-based declarative model on the past, I don't know, eight, nine years already, yeah. and a lot of the things that we have built around it are basically scoped to only that model, which basically limit us on the amount of things that we, we can actually do. So why don't, don't you tell these people, Mauricio, Yeah. Why are we here? here today? Okay, yeah. So it's really important to clarify this because I think that we come both from companies building tools, but here we wanted to talk a little bit more about solutions and concepts, right? Like we will show some tools in action, but what we want you to take away from this is like conceptually how we can approach different problems. Uh, we know that companies are going into that platform engineering space. I wrote a book about it, so it's, that's fine. But the, the, the whole idea here is that you don't really need to do a big bang approach where you said, tomorrow I will do platform engineering, right? Like we wanted to show you some solutions that will organically take you there. That's the main point. So for that, we would like you to like stick to a core idea. I mean, uh, as I said before, we've been doing software for a while, and I still remember the early days when I was like a Java developer, maybe 15 years ago. I had, I had like my Eclipse editor with uh, my Tomcat thing. And the good thing that, the thing that I liked about that is, is that I could reason pretty much about the whole system by only looking at the code, right? So I could jump from my functions, my classes, uh, and then I could just produce a WAR file and then I send, send it to someone. And that WAR file would go to production pretty much the same way that I would develop locally, right? Mm -hmm. So we would like you to like maybe try to go to that, you know, like uh, friendly or like uh, that nice uh, space during this presentation because part of this presentation is going to be try to take you there but also admitting that all the complexity that we have around is something that we have to like, basically embrace yeah. and use in a, in a better effective way. Yeah, so remember that like safe place where you have full control of all the things that you're doing and you know how things will behave. That's, for me, it's pretty far, far away. So having said that, uh, my name is Marcos Lilidal. You can find me in X at Marcos Niels, software engineer at Dagger. I've been working on this like for a while already, uh, distributed systems, uh, developer tools, platform engineering, and I do like open source a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that open source is the things that just connect us, right? Yeah. Anyway, right? So yeah, my, my name is Mauricio Salatino. I'm working for Diagrid with Mark. And uh, yeah, I'm just working on the Dapper project, Knative, Captain, and a bunch of other things. I wrote a book about platform engineering on Kubernetes that it's not for operation people. It's not for, you know, it's just for developers to understand how the tools in the CNCF space and the cloud native space can be combined to produce something that will help teams to go faster. I'm doing a book signing tomorrow if you're interested, but you know, that you will find it out. 
Uh, so let's get started, right? Having, let's yeah, having said that, uh, we didn't do like a demo sacrifice, like a yeah. go demo god sacrifice mm -hmm. this week. I mean, I'm running a Linux machine, mirroring my screen on Wayland, and you know anything can happen here. Yeah. Uh, but I had a croissant before. Maybe that that, that also works. That that helps. Let's. Um, so let's start with a simple application. What about that? Uh, and this is like we took the the application from Docker samples. This is a very well known application. How many people know this application? It's the voting app from Docker. Okay, so I see some hands, but it, like, if you started with Kubernetes, maybe you haven't seen this. So it's a very simple application where you can cast votes and then see the results, but with the distributed architecture, so you have three services, and Redis and PostgreSQL, just to show that you can connect different languages with different infrastructure and everything works fantastically, right? But, you know, you wanna say that? There's, yeah. there's one important thing, yeah. which is, we actually went to this application repository, and we, then we counted the number of modifications in the files that have been changed since 2019 until 2023. Yeah. And, and as you can see on, on the top right, yep. the most amount of files that were changed are YAML files, which YAML is basically files. Docker Compose, you know, yeah. and Kubernetes Manifest, and all that. And can anyone guess which is the second most changed file on this repository? Any guess? Bash? Bash? Any other ideas? No. YAML. YAML, of course, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, and then you have like C Sharp, and of course, Docker file, Docker with files. the number fourth. Uh, but yeah, basically this reflects a little bit of what we were speaking, like joking in the beginning. Like the past years have been mostly around this experience. Yeah. And I mean, we are developers. We like writing code, not writing YAML. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can like show you a different way of like doing this. Yeah, exactly. And no matter what you think about this, it's like when you look into this very, very simple application, you will see that you will need to learn about containers. As Marcos mentioned, there is, if you go to that repository, there is like YAML files for how do you start the application locally using Docker Compose, how do you deploy this to Kubernetes, how do you start different services depending if you want to run some tests, how do you start infrastructure. So it gets quite complicated. For new people, that's kind of like a lot. Another thing that I've noticed into this very simple application is that it's bounded to the infrastructure that it's using, right? Like you have PostgreSQL and Redis, so different applications written in different languages will need to connect to these things by injecting, kind of like by having clients inside the code, right? Like uh, the Redis uh, client or the PostgreSQL driver. And that brings some complexity. But finally, because the applications are written in different languages, you need to make sure that if you start creating best practices internally, like between different teams, you can share those. And if you are coming from different communities, so for example, from Java to C Sharp, sharing those best practices, it's pretty hard. And it's kind of complicated. And sometimes those mismatches in best practices are the things that cause the biggest issues. So if you look into the application, and if you look a little bit deeper into what happens when you deploy this application into Kubernetes, what you will see is that um, inside Kubernetes, you need way much more, like load balancers, and you need containers, and you need to get things done. But let's talk a little bit about like, what the application is doing. Can you show me the application, Marcos? Yep, before going into the code, because mm -hmm. I want to show the application running. So the application looks like that. It's pretty simple. You cast the vote, the worker will process the votes and just expose the results in the other side of the screen, right? So you can see that Marcos is casting a vote and the application is reacting. Again, it takes a little bit of time because there is an asynchronous thing there, processing the data and arranging it for the results. But if you are a developer, you want to see code, right? Like you want to see how this is done. And I don't want to see that right now. <laughs> Which one do you want to see? Uh, I think that we need to go to the slides. Yeah, there you go. So what happens here is that, again, if you go to different languages and if you take, start looking into the code, there, are, there, are, there, are, there is complexity in there. So the question is, how can we improve this? Like, if we know that the application, even if it's simple, you need to understand how to deploy it to Kubernetes, how to route traffic to it how to connect to infrastructure depending where that infrastructure is running. It might be running inside the cluster or it might be running outside. How can we improve this? I think that my answer as a developer are always like APIs, right? So APIs is the answer. And that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about the Dapper project, right? Again, because we want to show kind of like a case where APIs will help you to abstract away complexity that is related to the environment. And in this case, basically, Dapper stands for Distributed Application Runtime. And it basically does that. It provides you some APIs for developers to basically build and code applications, distributed applications. Uh, the APIs that are exposed, again, are developer friendly for developers to do the things that they are trying to do without worrying about the complexity about how the infrastructure is being set up. And we can see that 
uh, in the Dapper building blocks that are basically different APIs that are provided by the Dapper project to abstract complexity on things that you want to do, like state management or exchanging events between different applications. If you see in the other side, you can see workflows that are more complex behaviors that you can build using the basic building blocks. But again, as a developer, let's take a look at now at the code in, in GitHub. What I wanted to show here is that as a developer, again, you are interested in storing your votes into a persistent storage, right? Like, you are not very interested in knowing that that's going to Redis and how you are connecting to Redis. So what I'm showing here is that the result service, for example, here, it's using the Dapper APIs, get state, to get the votes that are being already stored in a persistent storage. This application code is using Dapper, with that, but that means that we are relegating, we are delegating the responsibility of connecting to PostgreSQL or to Redis to Dapper, and it's not inside the application. So the application doesn't have any driver or any client. If you take a look at the Java application, which is pretty much the, the previous one was Go, and this is Java, it's using the same APIs you know, to save the state into a persistent storage, like we don't know where. From an application point of view, we just want to store the votes somewhere. As you can see here, down there, we are also using publish event to emit events if we want to do that too. So simple APIs to perform things that you want to do in distributed applications. And from the uh, operation point of view, so that's from the application developer, you can use APIs. From the operation point of view, what Dapper does, how Dapper works, is basically you install Dapper into your Kubernetes clusters, and then uh, you annotate some of your application to say, this application wants to use the Dapper APIs. Dapper will recognize that, and it will inject the Dapper sidecar that will expose those APIs to the applications. On the bottom, you can see that we are using some YAML files now to configure how to connect to the infrastructure that is provided. So if you want to connect to Redis, you define a YAML component that says, you know, my APIs will be implemented by Redis, and Dapper will connect to Redis and store the information there. The same with, you know, uh, PostgreSQL. If you show quickly the cluster from an operation point of view, I just want to do, like, get namespaces. Yeah, get namespaces. You can see that Dapper is installed in my cluster. And if you do, like, get pods, like, where, where we are seeing on top, yeah, where we are seeing on top is that, you know, Dapper is injecting you know, the second container there inside my, my pod. That's the Dapper sidecar that is being injected. Finally, you can describe the components, if you can, like get describe components, just to see the simple configuration. And here I just want to highlight here, a state Redis is basically saying, okay, my implementation for the state store APIs is Redis, and I'm connecting to the Redis host that is listed there with the Redis password empty because I'm, you know, using a, a safe Redis instance. Cool, awesome. So, this is one of the ways that you can abstract connecting to different services, right, uh, by using Dapper and leveraging on the Dapper APIs, which are programmable, right? It's like basically code that you can, you can use. But Mauricio, I mean, we told this audience that, you know, you're here to actually try to, like, abstract or, like, simplify the way that you handle your applications. And now you're telling me exactly. that we need to inject a Dapper sidecar into, into my application, application. And then you showed Kubernetes. Like, how do I even run this locally? That's my a machine. very good question. It's running locally, but it took us quite some time, right? Yeah, like, a, like a Kubernetes cluster, like there a kind go. cluster and all that. So going back to the original idea of like this happy place where you have like a, like a fast feedback loop and then you can just like write, you write your application, spin up all the dependencies that you need. It usually starts like this, right? I have my like fast cycle loop. I, just, I have my IDE. I can compile the app and run it locally. And then all of a sudden someone comes to you and says, hey, we are using containers now, so we need to like do a little bit of like a, like a Band-Aid thing where maybe you have to write like a Docker file, and maybe you have to have like a little script here and there to actually start a Docker container and maybe connect to it. And you as a developer, you're fine with it because you know that it's going to simplify the work for deploying the application to production. So it's not that bad. But then someone else come, comes and tells you, hey, now you need to like lift up like a more complex setup in your machine. I'm pretty sure that most of us have been through this situation. And then that, that band-aid starts becoming like a bit more like a glue, right? So it's something that you can't get rid of right now. You can't like hack around it that much because you need to like basically follow specific steps to start all this locally until, of course, we go to Kubernetes. And please don't even get me started on how you even test this on CI, right? Because it's yes. like impossible. I mean, there's, I would assume that most of you are probably ha have two different approaches. So you have like your own local setup where you probably run, I don't know, Ansible, whatever tool you're using today to provision this locally. And then in on CI, it's probably a, a completely different specification of probably YAML or maybe Jenkins or Groovy or something, where you basically spin up all these things in a different way through a different workflow, which actually never works. And now you have Kubernetes, right? 
So this makes the glue like even bigger, and then you can't escape it, and then you enter into this like sad world of actually having to deal with this, even if you are application developers. It's funny because we were in a meetup yesterday, yep. and then I, there's someone who actually came and told me, hey, uh, how do you, I, I told that person, how do you actually enable your developers to actually ship faster? And then he told me, oh, we just give them a Kubernetes cluster so, in some place. They have to learn QCTL, they have to learn Kubernetes, and they need to like, know the insights to actually make their application work. And not everybody can do that, right? Like, it's no, of course. Right? Yeah, like, there's so. a lot of like, uh, cognitive knowledge to actually get all that thing. I mean, and you are developers. You care about like, creating better applications, not like managing a Kubernetes cluster. Yep. But anyhow, uh, if my slides continue, yeah. and now Mauricio okay. comes to us and tells us, hey, not only that, Just add side but then you need to add sidecars to all these things, which is this that new dapper thing that's going to allow you to basically uh, make the service communication better. I mean, we want to embrace this complexity, but we need a way to handle it, right? Exactly. So this is the point where I tell Mauricio, I mean, that's it, man. I'm, that's, that's I, I'm, I'm done with that. I mean, I'm going to retire to a farm and probably grow tomatoes or something because I, I can't really deal with this complexity Sounds anymore. Sounds like fun. Come on. But wait, wait. We are here to tell yeah. this audience that some solutions. there are some yeah. solutions, right? Yeah, yeah. There are some solutions that are more like developer friendly and will allow you to actually make this, this better. So entering Dagger, uh, how many people know about Dagger? Can you raise hands pretty quick? OK. Cool. Good, good. Not that many, which is great, because you're here to actually learn this. <laughs> so basically, Dagger is CI as code and a lot more things. And you're going to know why it's a lot more things in this presentation. Yeah. But basically, what Dagger allows you is to transform your messy scripts, like even if you run them locally or in CI, into clean code pipelines that you can run the same way locally and in CI. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea behind Dagger is that uh, you forget about the push and pray, you know, what we call the push and pray drama, which is around like, oh, I, I basically hack my code locally, and then I push it, and then I wait for the CI to run, and which then it fails, and then I need to go back to my code, and then I say, okay, git commit, fix me, and then try again. But the important, important thing here, which generally gets not enough attention, it's the word code, right? Yeah. So the fact that you can encode all these pipelines by using like a, a programming language, it actually opens the door and, and solves a lot of issues, which is, okay, how do you share like, you know, like the functionality that you're doing? Yeah. As you share any other co-library, right? How do you distribute that? Your, your programming language already has like a distribution method, right? You have a package manager, you have a registry in maybe in a lot of places. How do, how do you even test your pipeline? Your programming language already has a testing framework. So, so a lot of things are basically for free the, the moment that you start like embracing this code paradigm. And who is Dagger for? Well, actually, Dagger is for developers, right? So you can be like, like a platform developer. You can be like an SRE. You can be also like a developer advocate that is also like trying to show solutions to customers. The good thing about Dagger is because you can encode all this logic in order to like spin up your environments or maybe test them in, in CI as well. Uh, the good thing is that, is that you can encode them by code and run them the same everywhere. It's basically a tool that is very friendly for anyone to actually grab and use. So before jumping into the API uh, side of uh, Dagger, I would like to show you how we are going to change this mode application that Mauricio was showing us, that uh, only running Kubernetes, by mostly leveraging Dagger. So uh, let's go to the voting app. So I'm going to go to the repository. I'm, I'm going to show you the worker component that Mauricio was showing. And I'm going to go into the worker folder, and you're going to see that I have like a dagger.json and a dagger uh, folder here. The dagger.json basically defines what a dagger module is. Mm -hmm. Dagger is presented as a, as a solution that allows you to encode these pipelines in modules and functions. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that you're going to notice in, in this example is that I have a dagger module, dagger module that actually has a, other dependencies. I'm going to get into that in a minute. Uh, but the important thing for you is to understand is that this is a dagger module that is written in TypeScript and uses this dagger version and basically loads the Dagger source code from this source uh, folder, which is in the parent that, uh, that, uh, that you can see here. If I go into the Dagger pipeline itself, in this case, you're going to see that it's written in TypeScript. And the most important thing, like the, the, the basic construct of Dagger, is that you can encode all this logic in functions. So for this worker component particularly, I have the serve function, which basically starts my worker uh, service. And then I have the build function that, as you can see, receives a, di a directory where my um, source code lives. And then it also receives, optionally, because I have this optional uh, syntax here, optionally it receives a service, a Reddit service, and a Postgres service, which, if you remember the architecture diagram, like basically this worker depends on both services. 
So I can optionally uh, specify them here. And if I don't specify them, this is where the Dagger specific API comes into place, where I can actually define a container uh, from this particular image. I can expose a, a port, and then I can start and inject this service into my application, right? The most important part of this build pipeline is that my application is written in uh, C Sharp. And instead of like, you know, having a Docker file and having a compose file that actually stitches all that together, I have a single place which is defined as code using the Dagger APIs, right, where I can like define these containers the same way that I was doing before, but with real code. And then I can also attach these services that this container needs in the same place. Yeah, and if you ask me as a developer, right, I like the idea of being able to codify how do I work with my applications. I don't think that I like that much the idea of writing pipelines for like the CI space because that's probably managed by a different team. But in this case, I believe that what Marcos is showing here will allow you to define the developer experience for developers working with these kind of like complex applications. Yeah, so now I can show you if I go to the terminal and then I go to the worker.net. Uh, directory, is, since I'm in, in this module, and in a, in a Dagger module, I can do Dagger functions. Yeah. And this is going to basically show all the available functions mm -hmm. that I have for, for this app. And then I can, yeah. I need to yeah. stop Mauricio's application yeah. first. And then I can do Dagger serve, which is the function that I showed before. I need to specify a directory, which is where my source code live, which is dot, and then app, Dagger call, sorry. Dagger call serve app. Yeah. What this is going to do, this is going to basically pull the containers that I, that I showed you before. This is going to start the application locally mm -hmm. using the Postgres and Redis services that I've shown before. And this is already fetching votes, even though it says it, it fails. It's not failing it's, it's, some internal things. Yeah. Uh, but this is actually working, right? So I, I didn't have to like touch any Docker files, anything at all. I just called the Dagger functions. So jumping quickly into the other module, I want to show you really quick the uh, result module, yeah. which is this one. In this case, uh, this is the result application where we see the voting results. This is also a Dagger module, but in this case, you're going to see that the module is defined in Go and has like two different dependencies, the Dapper dependency and the Go dependency. So if I go to the code really quick here, and this is the module concept that I want, wanted to show you. Again, same API as you saw before, containers with environment, but, but, in, this, but in, in this case, in written in Go. Yeah. And the most important thing here is that we are using the Dapper uh, Dagger module, which basically is a function that I'm pulling from a different place, right? It doesn't matter in which language this function is written on because it's going to work in the Dagger ecosystem. And then I can call functions on this module that allow me to basically extend my application in some sort of way. In this case, I'm bringing the Dapper module that is going to automatically launch this container and then uh, this Dapper container and inject it in next to my application. There you go. So I define this by code, basically. As you can see, same structure as the pre previous, uh, uh, previous component. I have a build and a, and a serve. And what I want to show you here is that I can do uh, where I'm, I'm in the .NET. So I'm going to go back to the Root. result, go result, and I, I'm going to do Dagger functions. Mm -hmm. In this case, this module provides me with, with three functions. I can build, I can serve, and I can test. So I can show you how I can test this application really fast. Yeah. Dagger call, test. I'm calling the app. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is that I can do dagger call dear local and then uh, serve yeah. serve up. So what this is going to do is going to basically start the voting application. It's going to expose a port in my local machine. So this is basically running Redis. It's running Dapper. It's running all the dependencies that I need. It's already exposing a port in my machine. So I can do localhost. 3,000, and then I have the application running locally, right? Yep. No YAML, no Docker files, no, no Docker Kubernetes. No Kubernetes. No Kubernetes. Yeah, that's like, I have locally. the yeah. same setup that Mauricio is showing Kubernetes, but running locally. Yep. Go with slides. We closed it up. Yeah, we need to speed, speed it up a little bit. Yeah. So the important thing here is that mm -hmm. Dagger gives you APIs. As you saw in the code, like briefly in the code that I show you, you have the container API, directory API, file API, secrets. These are like the building blocks, right? We like to say internally that Dagger is a tool that allows you to uh, uh, like gives you like a, some sort of like DevOps operating system mm -hmm. where you have like the core APIs. But the important thing here is that you can start building your, your yeah. uh, personal experiences 
on top of this API by, by extending this with your, uh, your personal APIs. You so you can like, define APIs like, I don't know, application or maybe whatever you need internally in your company. So you can use Dagger to extend this and basically build your own developer experience. Yeah. How does it look in CI? The same way that I did in the terminal, I basically did like Dagger call test. Yeah. You basically take this to like uh, whatever CI you have, and then you can just like run it in the same way. This is the power of Dagger, right? You can run it locally and in CI using the same experience. Yeah. Uh, so, and this is basically the final diagram. Uh, the way that we switch this application is we basically modularize everything, mm -hmm. and now you have like a Dagger module for all the things. Yeah. And I can quickly show you. Just need to finish. Yeah. Yeah, and wrapping up yeah, we need the to presentation. Wrap up. Oh, just to close. So I can do like, I have like the, the top level module which basically uses all the modules that I, I showed you before, and I'm gonna do Dagger call, yeah. the, uh, Dagger call vote up. So what this is gonna do, this is basically gonna start everything. So it's gonna start the, uh, a, oh, point. up. So the, 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 the vote up returns a service, and the service requires like a subcommand, which is like basically start a service. Yeah. And this is going to run everything. It's going to run the front end, the worker, the uh, result service. And it's going to wire everything together and just like allow me to like run it locally in the same way. So yeah. I can open this up, localhost 8080. Boom. And you have this running. Yeah. There you go. So. This is, this is really good. I think that like um, we have worked on this like together. The main idea here is again just to bring Dapper, like the Dapper experience that it's pretty polished when you run in Kubernetes clusters closer to developers and the local development loop lifecycle, right? Like the idea that you can start Dapper applications locally, it's just one example of the things that you can achieve by using these tools. What Marco showed about the APIs, I think it's the same message. Like on the Kubernetes side, we're trying to abstract away infrastructure from applications. What Marcos is showing here is that we can create like more complex developer experiences for local development that can match like more like complex environments like running inside the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I think that yeah, I think that yeah. Again, it's like we are just bringing the complexity closer to the developer, but in a way that it's abstracted away, so they don't need to worry about it. You have a question for me. I have a question. For, yeah, well, so I send you, what, what was the question? You send me a PR? Well, that's not the question. I send you a PR. Can you, <laughs> can you check it out? Yeah. That's the question, if I can check it out. Can you check it out? <laughs> well, he sent me a PR, so I have a, like, with some changes to my, to yeah. my application. The thing is that I, I need to check out the code, you know, that's, that's very messy. Yeah. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leverage the power of Dagger to actually so, so show to you show something that. very cool. So I showed you before that my application, as part of its API, yeah. requires a directory, right? in this case, where the source code is going to be mm -hmm. like, uh, brought in. Mm -hmm. But I never told you what that directory could be, right? That directory could be like, I don't know, maybe a, a git source yeah, repo. Maybe like a branch in my git repo, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. And because the Dagger modules are already published in GitHub, I can actually pull from those modules directly and use them regardless of the yeah. uh, environment that I have in my local machine, right? So the only thing that I need is, is Dagger. And in this case, I'm going to be calling the same function that I, call, that I showed you before. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this particular example, the function is being pulled from GitHub directly, not from my local machine. Yeah. Then I'm going to call the same vote up function. Mm -hmm. And the directory is going to be like a full yeah. qualified GitHub URL yeah. with the branch name that Mauricio told me. So let's see if this works. Go. Yeah. And I think that that's... I don't need to have the source code of my application yeah. uh, for this example. This is basically pulling everything dynamically, dynamically on, and on demand. And if the demo gods are with us. Yeah, and I think that the, the main thing that he's trying to show here is that we can create changes for our application in branches, and then we can just quickly create preview environments with very, very complex setups by reusing all these module definitions. And this is quick because Dagger has like a caching system. If you want to mm -hmm. learn more about that, uh, you can go outside. Yes. So to wrap it up, there you go. let's see what the new options we have now. There you go. So do we <laughs> vote for code? <laughs> So what, what, what should we vote? What do you say? Do you prefer doing code or YAML? Do I go with YAML? Code. 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 <laughs> code. Let's do code. Nice. OK. And, and now we can code. So yeah, with Dagger, you can have like immediate preview environments with just like a single function call. There you go. And you can have Dapper for local development. So that's great. That also like starts yeah. the whole Dapper, uh, Dapper so thing. So without like further ado, like takeaways, like you know, hiding complexity behind APIs. APIs are the answers if you are developers, right? Like try to find the right APIs for obstructing your complexity in your companies, no matter which tools you are using. Building experiences for your team is becoming more and more important if you want to reduce complexity and cognitive load for people working with all these tools. And yeah, again, like just try to help teams to be more productive. And as Mark was saying in the beginning, this is about developers and software developers. So 
Thank you. Thank very you very much. much.